Hello guys, welcome back to my channel. This is Ali and I am back with another Raid Shadow Legends video. In this video, I want to show you a Fulton team with the Green Warden Reward and Nia. So the, <clears throat> they're from the new faction. Um, the Sylvan Watchers, Rourke is a legendary, he's got a 4 turn cooldown taunt with strengthen and increased defense. And he's got a decreased attack which is really handy. And his passive is pretty nice, that gives you a shield whenever you lose some HP. And Nia is in here for the reset on the A2 and the decreased speed. Let's um, let's go watch the watch some parts of the run, and I'll talk about some of the important things that you need to have in mind while you're doing uh, while you're doing the run and while you're gearing your champs. Let's go. Okay, so while it's playing the run, I'll talk about some of the issues that you might face in your team. The first issue that you would be facing would be health mischief stealing your buffs from Ruar. Specifically, stealing the taunt buff from Ruar. So, having Ruar with a lot of resistance is necessary. Also, he needs to. Well, he not. It's not that he needs to. Also, if he has the lightning lightning shield, that would be really helpful. Um, it activates whenever the enemies get buffs and it helps you keep his keep your buffs as you can see here in the run he has the lightning shield because the head of the K gave himself a buff and he revived and it gives you a chance to prevent the head of mischief from stealing your buffs so this blessing is very helpful the other issue that you would face would be the head of wrath because he hits very hard and other than like very hitting very hard he has a chance of provoking your Ruark or Nia and if they miss their turns you're gonna be in trouble but it, this team is more forgiving than the Emic team so even if you get provoked it's not the end of the run and you, the, if the provoke lands in the right time it might not even cause you any issues. But it is annoying and it can be problematic with battle RNG. So you need the resistance on Nia and Green Water War for sure. And I guess the last problem would be the head of decay. He he's gonna cleanse in my team because I don't have a provoker or provoke set on anyone in the team. But if you have but if you have a provoker or like provoke set and you want to bring them that can cause you to control the head of decay more and he would not cleanse your buffs often your debuffs often but since i don't have it the head of decay really lowers my damage and really and cleanses a lot cleanses my boss a lot so that's kind of an, that's really annoying um, but it doesn't do anything to make you fail the run. That's the good part of, part about it. Like this team is tanky enough to stay alive even if the dec head of decay removes all your buffs and you get hit hard because you have because we have a lot of guardians set on a lot of people here and the builds are decent to keep you alive. Let's go see the end of the run and I'll talk there too. Okay, so as you can see, the head of decay here it cleanses, all my debuffs are gone. I have to reapply them again and deal with the shield. And the shield is kind of nice sometimes when it goes on the head of Torment, because I have a Shemail and he just boosts the Terminator of the leader. So whoever you put as the lead will get a lot of Terminator and they're going to do a lot of damage. So make sure your DPS is the lead. And when you're putting a DPS as a lead, make sure they're tanky enough and they have a way of surviving. Like, this Geomancer is tanky enough to survive and he is in Immortal set. One set of Immortal besides the Reflex, so he kind of gets some passive healing from it, which really helps him stay alive. But yours, so as I said, your leader has to be tanky. 
If they're not tanky, you're, they're just gonna die and you're gonna say this team doesn't work. So make sure they're tanky. And and yeah, that's it. this is it. Like you won't have really, you won't really have many issues as long as your taunt isn't stolen and you're not provoked by the head of wrath. It didn't happen to me even once in this in this run. I think having the lightning shield really helps on Ruarch. And one more thing, make sure to listen carefully to the things that I say about uh, in the for the builds. Um, the builds are very important and you have to make sure to do them as I say or you're either gonna die really fast or your team's not gonna be in tune. Hope that makes sense. Let's go talk about the builds and see you guys there. Okay, so before we go, let me show you the builds and talk about some important notes that you need to have in mind when building this team. So Green Warden Ruark, he's in Guardian set. And honestly, it's very crucial to have him in Guardian set because it really helps everyone else stay alive and he literally takes, takes no damage. So he's he has four four ninety-four resistance resistance. You don't need this much for for brutal hydra. You only need like 480, 470 resistance, and you need around 300, you need between 300 and 350 on Brutal, depending on if the head of Suffering is out or not. So that's enough accuracy, and 63k HP, and 3.3k defense. He only needs 2.7k defense, more than that wouldn't really matter that much, because of his increased defense and his strength and being up all the time. So have that 155 speed in mind, and he's fully booked. The only thing that you need to book is the A3, so if you land two books here, you don't need to book the other um, the other parts, but it's it would be nice to book this one to make it 100%, but you don't need the cooldown. That's the good part, like you can just book this halfway if you're lucky. But I was unlucky and I had to book A1 too. And his blessing, this lightning cage is amazing. If you have this, put it on him, it helps you not get, get your buffs stolen. It's really good. And like he never, his buffs never got stolen, even when his terminator got stolen. Which is really great. Also his masteries are very important because he doesn't really hit. And he's very slow, so you don't you don't do War Master on him. You do the defense tree, and you get the bulwark on him. This is very important to keep your other champions alive. And this mastery to just increase the duration of the decrease attack. So these two are very important. And I should mention that the idea of bulwark just being used in Hydra came to me from. Hydra Guru in Nub's server. I was just talking about him and he was telling me about this mastery in one some of his scenes and I just got the idea to use it in my own team and it worked out pretty well. So he needs to be in Guardian, he needs to have this mastery, these are amazing. And my Archbishop Pintroy, he's always had War Master, I've always had him with these masteries so I didn't change them. And he did like 6 million damage, which is fine. And he's again in Guardian 2. I, I think he would be amazing in Relentless or even Reflex set. Just to get back to, to these abilities more often. Because this is on a 4 turn cooldown and it's kind of annoying. So he is 274. The faster he is, the better because he can give you more protective buffs. He can give you more healing and he, he has like 300 resistance and 255 accuracy the accuracy is enough because of his increased accuracy aura so there is that and Oboro she's in a curse set and she's a three star she has three star cruelty masteries are like this so that she does kind of more damage the important ones are lasting gifts this really helps 
and the sniper helps you land more hexes and land more decreased defense from the A1. The lasting gifts helps you with the buffs that you have for the A3 so that she is your mischief tank more often. But you don't need to have a war in this team. I'll talk about the champions that you can bring. So, so she is... She's 258 speed, 35k HP, 2.4k defense. As you can see, it's very squishy. She's very squishy. Some damage stats. And she only needs 70% crit rate because of her A3. And 485 resistance. The resistance in, on her is very important so that her buffs don't get stolen. And she has enough accuracy with the increased accuracy uh, buff to land her debuffs. And my DPS was a Geomancer, he is in Reflex set and Immortal set. The reason for Immortal is that because he's the leader, he, he's, he loses his buffs more often and so he takes more damage. So this passive healing from the Immortal heals him a lot because he takes so many turns. And Refresh accessories on him are great if you have them, it really helps you a lot with the damage. Um, 50k, just tanky with enough accuracy. I would prefer to have like 300 resistance on him too. And he needs to be fast, like as fast as possible. If he had like more resistance, he would resist all the debuffs too, which would be which would be really nice. And he's got War Master. And the last, well, not not the last person. And the next person is White Dryad Nia. She's again in Bulwark, she's because her job is to keep the others alive and reset and do the decreased speed. But these are her masteries. And she's fully booked. And for her blessings, I guess I would tell you which ones. Miracle Heal is amazing, pretty nice, really helps out. And Cruelty is pretty good too. So she is in Guardian again. The Guardian on her and um, Ruark are very crucial, so you need to have them both in Guardian. In Hydra Battles. She's 234 speed, 59k the HP, 3.1k defense, so she needs to have more than that 2.7k defense. The more defense she has, the better, because she loses the increased defense buff sometimes and she takes a lot of damage. So the four, over 470 resistance is necessary and she has enough accuracy to land her debuffs. So as if you remember, I said look at the speed on Ruark, he was 155 and Nia is 234. Nia has to be faster than 1.5 times of Ruark's speed. So like if Ruark is 100 speed, Nia has to be faster than 150. If Roark is 200 speed, Nia has to be faster than 300 speed. I hope that makes sense. So you just have to make sure Nia has more than 1.5 times of Roark's speed. So like Nia and Roark are, are going 3 to 2. Hope well, that makes sense. And the reason for it, I, I'll explain the reason. This has a 3 turn cooldown and Ruark's A4 has a 4 turn. When she resets it, it becomes 2 turns. So every so this needs to be up all the time. So on a 2 turn cooldown that he goes, that he goes, he has to reset this. So in order for Nia to get back to this, she has to go 3 turns. I hope that makes sense. So has, she has to go 3 turns and he has to go 2 turns to put this back up. So she has to be 3 to 2. And yep. Make sure she has enough resistance. Make sure she's in Guardian set. And I'll say that this team was very clean and they were very tanky. Like no one ever came close to dying. And only use her ally pro ally protection when you think things are getting tough. She's very tanky, but don't use it all the time. It's it, it's kind of difficult to keep keep her alive if you just spam this ally protection. Just do it when it's absolutely necessary. 
I hope that makes sense. And if you can build her to be more tanky, go for it. And just make sure you don't make Roar too fast. Because you're gonna have to add 1.5 times of that speed to Nia. That makes sense. So just have that in mind. And for every, and for Shemel, he's in Guardian too, but I don't think he needs to be in Guardian. This is just what I had him in, so I just left it uh, the same. He doesn't have a blessing. This one doesn't have a blessing. He's got War Master. For this team, I would say get Giant Slayer because he he will just do way more damage. And I just didn't want to change it, change it and use the gems for now. But I'll do it in the future. And for the blessings for him, you can go, if you have blessings, you can go Phantom Touch and, or you can go Cruelty. The Cruelty really is a good thing. And, yep, his stats, let me show you his stats, 230 speed, some, some damage in him, he, he's not really built to do that much damage. And this 300 resistance was amazing because he was just getting targeted by the head of decay and the heat reduction was just getting resisted over and over. If you can build him with more damage but like give him some some resistance too, that would be really good. Okay, so before we go, let me talk about a few things that you need for your team to work. So. First of all, to increase your damage, you need decreased defense, you need block buffs, and you need a damage dealer. And if you can bring someone to increase speed, that would really help your team do more damage and have more control over the fight. So like Lydia, or the Bunny, or someone like Ugo, they bring a lot to this team, but I just didn't use them because they're used in my other teams. And you need the DPS, again, as I said in the Amic video, if your DPS is someone that places burns, that would make your run more smooth. But if you're just bringing a normal DPS, it would be nice to have someone in some sort of like a provoke set to help you control the head of decay more. But again, if you don't have it, again, it's still fine because the, the team is tanky enough to stay alive with all those guardian sets. And some options, the bunny is pretty amazing, Lydia, nuts. Akrizia as your DPS. Nekmothar would be a very good, very good option in this team. Mithrala, she's very easy to get. If you do some Hydra, you definitely have her. She brings a lot, she brings some protection. Also, I must say that you need just a little bit of healing or just a little bit of protection to keep your champs alive. Nia gets some healing from her passive, which heals your other champions. But again, she needs some sort of passive healing to just keep you alive. She can't do it by herself. So you need a little bit of protection. Could be in the form of Archbishop's A3, which is increased defense, some shielding and like some healing. Could be Ugo's A3. Could be like a Duchess's passive. There are so many options out there. Could be like some something like a Razzlevarg's leech or Necmothar's leech. There are many options. You just need to find the best thing for you. And as I said, the speeds are important. Anyways, this is it for this video. And I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you have any more questions, please let me know. And if you haven't watched the Amic team, Definitely go watch it. If you have him, he's the best option for this kind of team. So build that one. Anyways, I'll talk to you guys later and I'll see you in the next video.